What's up, what's up, what's up? Y'all back with us, Revolutionary Addictotes. We're here today. My name is Blue. My name is Angie. And we're here to talk about healing generational trauma. And yes, yes. the interplay of trauma and addiction. And the dark nights of the soul. And yeah, when those two things meet. Yeah, sets off. Yeah, yeah. And for me, coming from trauma, um, I always believe it didn't cause me to be an addict, or maybe it did, but it definitely put me in the fast lane to needing something to soothe myself, something outside of myself. I, like I wasn't given the, the self regulation tools. I didn't know about you know, shoot, breathing, take a breath, pause. You know, um, so I was looking for stuff that was outside of me to to help. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, and, and the component of trauma, like the way that scientifically what happens when you experience it. And yes. then and then you, you know, when you learn at a young age, like when you're in that theta brain state and you like adopt maladaptive yeah. ways of um, yeah, coping from ages with one that. one to seven. One to seven. So, you know, I picked up alcohol, I think. I don't even remember, but around that. I mean, it was just formative. So every time I experienced... Yeah, any type of abuse or any type of triggering situation, I had alcohol, mm -hmm. and then I had, and then, and then I would mm -hmm. smoke weed, and then I found the perfect concoction to kind of um, self soothe. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. so um, and it's yeah. interesting in Greek, the trauma means wound. Yeah, which is you know, and that's exactly like what we were talking about in the last episode with alcohol being a body eating spirit, right. a spirit eating body. Um, and the wounds of that that it causes, and also the generational trauma that, obviously, as a, as black Jamaican multiracial woman, Egyptian, we're black yeah. black women, you know, like we have it in our ancestry, like our ancestors were enslaved and brought here from our country without our permission, you know what I'm saying? So that comes with a lot of lineage of pain and trauma and um, then being a woman, you know, and then what our parents give us. And like, I truly believe like what my mother was going through while I was in the womb, like it's uh, that energy was with me, that affected me, you know? And so the PTSD that my mom might've had gets passed down right to me. Right, right. And I know you've experienced a similar feeling, right? Definitely. I mean, I think any, you know, all people from like the African diaspora oh have- my God. It just kind of gets embedded in your DNA. Like mm -hmm. so, if you have this lin long lineage of people that uh, used right or or come from abuse or are violent, yeah, um, it's like, I mean, that's why I say like in recovery, I think we're cycle breakers. We, yes. we we're the ones who kind of do yeah. the deep work to try to shift things for the next generation. One hundred percent. Yeah, certain things just don't don't work anymore. No, nope, no. Nope. Just like um, recovery. Well, recovery is progressive. You know, if I stay sober and if I keep on doing this thing, like it affects it affects everybody around me. You know, right. like I I affect the people that come up to me and be like, "What are you doing differently? You're shining brighter." You know, like. And when I'm using in the trauma, the trauma is progressive, you know? And if I slipped and I'm like, you know what? I got a little time. I don't need to stay sober anymore, you know? This shit will get bad fast. Like I saw a homeless man one time with a sign. He was like, things go bad fast. I was like, that's real, bro. That's I'm so <laughs> sorry. Like, that's if that real. Wasn't a, if that wasn't a message. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, it's real. And I think that what's not talked talked enough about is the link between trauma and addiction. Because if... Like it's cool. Like if if um I I have respect for the AA, you know the way AA works that they want you to focus on recovery first. But for me, just this addict, mm -hmm. I needed to do. I needed to take a holistic approach. Like my trauma was the number one um trigger. Like I didn't like I yeah I drank to to, to party, but I did really drink. A lot of my drinking was done in, in secrecy. Yeah, and it was done to like show up for people. Yep. to calm my anxiety. And so, yeah, the beginning that the four step was revolutionary for me because yeah. it allowed me to, to like actually see what was going on, like m in my subconscious mind, like yeah. that was basically running the show. Yeah. And so the 12 steps, the first step, second step, third step, fourth step is the action where we take inventory of our life. You know what happened, the cause, our part, right. like finding my part and learning that, like I found a 12 step group called We Are Responsible. And I was like, when I first went to the therapist and the therapist was like, you need to tell your mother what happened to you. 
you know, that that's freedom, like honesty, talking about my trauma. I was, I was scared because I was always trying to protect my mom, you know, mm. and I was worried she would harm herself or something if I told her because she didn't know. And um, I had to, the therapist was like, you got to do it for you. You can't think about anybody else's feelings. You have to do it for you. And I did that. And she's like, also go to a 12 step program. And I did that. And I was, I was of course blaming my parents at first because it's justified resentments and anger. You know, if I wasn't left with unsafe people, bad things wouldn't have happened to me, you know? So it was like, it wasn't my fault at seven years old. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. so when I first, when we came, like she just said, the fourth step is revolutionary, but it's also like, I have a part in everything. Like now that I'm a 38 year old woman, what's my part in my, in my, in my trauma from a child? It's me perpetuating the pain, you know, being mad at all people for one person or five people or 10 people's, um, attitudes and behaviors and toxic abuse right. but it's like being able to heal myself and love myself and not perpetuate that pain yeah you and, know and that addiction to also like i feel like in the fourth step like that that was the gift of finding like another black woman to walk me through the steps yeah I was, I was able to write down like you know white supremacy like you know the police yep. uh racial injustice all that stuff yeah. and and i saw that like like in, in that in that one column of like, you know, what is it? Like my fears, mm -hmm. it's all injustice, right? Mm -hmm. It's all littered with and then my defect is is instant justified anger or rage. Yep. And those yep. two things, especially in the climate of what's been happening and what's well, been happening since the beginning of time, but it being taped and highlighted. Yeah. Um the resurgence. Right. And we talked about the like we talked about like, I mean, not being able to go and, and like protest in the streets because like, I get drunk off rage. Mm -hmm. Like, let's just let's just be real. Clear. Yeah, I was very choosy about when I went and I did protest. I had to, and but when I did, I was very choosy in making sure that it wasn't going to be a moment where I might get triggered and I might have to go. I might go to jail or I might want to drink over it. Like, it's and I got to be. I have to put my recovery first, and I have to make sure I'm not setting myself up for a setback. You know, right. as far as me picking up a drug, picking up a smoke. You know, like weed is a is the gateway for me. Like I like in. Next week, I'll have four years, no alcohol, but I stayed smoking weed alcoholically, right. you know, because weed numbs me out. And it was just like people, and we used to say that, be, it being the gateway. I was like, nah, until it happened, until this Cali weed had me dumbified. Yeah, Cal Cali weed is a... <laughs> Yo, Cali weed is straight comatose in the walking, the walking dead. I mean, even the names, you know? the names out here are oh, just... God. Anyway. yeah. <laughs> We won't, we won't get into that. But like, yeah, <laughs> that rage does that to me. Oh, yeah. Like rage, Blackout, like, rage will get me. That's my rage. gateway drug, right? Yeah. So like, that's why we discussed putting this podcast together is a form of activism. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. And activism looks different today because of recovery. Yeah. And the steps. So like the fourth step is a great word. It's shadow work. So healing trauma and like, mm. that's all a big word. What does that mean? Generational trauma, yeah. current trauma. Like I create and per perpetuate the trauma on myself by being in toxic relationships because guess what? Everything is energy. Where I'm at, I manifest. It's funny how people will be like, it's their fault or LA sucks or everybody's bad. I'm like, boo, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Because I guarantee I, I manifest what I deserve or wherever my energy, wherever I'm vibrating, is what I get. I right. That's my experience. No, you're right. And I think that the fourth step leads us to that, right? Like your part allows us to see like that we are, we create our reality. Yes. And like yeah. the reality and, and, and that basically if you don't heal your trauma, you're on a constant, like it's a, it's a, it's a CD that keeps skipping. Yeah. Like yeah. in your relationships, your, your, you know, like your, your dysfunctional ass parents show up. Yep. Yep. Um, yep. In, in, in even work, job place, you know, um, a lot of like racism and sexual, like, se you know, it's like sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. It just starts to kind of like, I think that's the moment that I had. I was like, oh yeah, like this is, I'm recreating my whole life. Re-traumatizing. Because I was drunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like it's like the people with unsolved trauma, you know, we're constantly on high alert, you know, like we were talking about in the, in the last in the last podcast, we we're like, we're sitting in the corner of the room, never have our back to the door, you uh -huh. know, just always scoping it out because Any, I was. Yeah, but anybody brushes ne next to us. Mm -hmm. It's like, what? You yeah, know, just instant. high alert, high alert. Yeah. So in order to do that, like walking through it, talking through it, like I had to get therapy, like trauma is a big deal. PTSD mm. is a big deal. This stuff, we don't have to do this alone. And that's what I want to advocate for. As I had to go ask and get for help, I had to learn how to calm my mind and mm -hmm. pause and breathe and EFT, which is emotional freedom technique, you mm. know, tapping, tapping it out, massages, banging it out. Like it's serious. And EMDR. EMDR has been like amazingly EMDR. groundbreaking. Yeah. And, um, how was your experience? Oh, I mean it. 
basically it's 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 it was amazing for me because my formal diagnosis was PTSD, mm-hmm. right? So like if 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 I have PTSD, which I didn't even think applied to like trauma. Well, and yeah, I, like people outside of a war, right? right? But right. but at, but at any point there's you know, there's war in families, there's all types like our you know, our the racial climate, but but basically what EMDR allowed me to do was to go back and reprocess memories yep, me in too. a different way and then it actually starts to deactivate like the amygdala, right? So yep. like yep. I'm not on fight or flight anymore. I have pause. I can I can like appraise triggers. Mm-hmm. And then what recovery al- allows me to do is like uh, it's, uh, it allows me to basically like use my prefrontal fr- cortex mm-hmm. and that's wired for mm-hmm. solution. Mm-hmm. So it's like that in conjunction with recovery was groundbreaking for me. Yeah, no, me too. It was when with the EMDR, you know, um, looking at the the ball going left to right. So we're putting ourselves in theta state, which is right. the most suggestible for our subconscious mind, right. right? So my eyes going, it was at it was it was very intense. But oh, yeah. then I've been thinking about things that happened to me, and then sh- they ask questions, and they're like, "Okay, what are you feeling now?" And then we go look at the ball, and it's ma- It's actually it was created for people from that coming from war. But like right. we have wars in our homes, you yeah. know, people are beat. You know, I had to watch my mother get get beat, and I had to, you know, like stuff. I ha- I was raised with a, like a pimp in my house. It was terrifying. He was a control freak and chasing me around. And I remember hiding from him under the bed, and like he would, you know, just abuse. Abuse was happening. That is traumatic. Yeah, that's, that's sexual a war, abuse. That, well, and that's a war zone. It is a war zone. Um, so that is PTSD, and it's like, and the brain is just so magnificent because it's like I like that quote where it's like. Um, you know, the God will never give you more than you can handle, but it's actually not a quote. I said it, <laughs> that, but I said, the brain will never show you more than you can handle. You right, know, like right. I, I, I was like, what? Cause our brain is just so, it's, it's the, the most amazing technology in the universe is the human brain, you know, and we right. have self-will. Well, and that's why I think in like early recovery, it feels like, uh, like you're in cognitive dissonance, right? Like it feels like imposter syndrome. Yeah. It's like show up better than, you know, act better than you feel or whatever. And and there's there's something to that. You know, it's like in training the brain. Yeah. Yeah. New neural yeah. Pla- you know, new neuroplasticity. Neural path- yeah. And and pathways, right? It's yeah. like it's teaching you a way of life that done done consecutively with that discipline changes your life, changes yeah. your brain. Yeah. So I love Joe Dispenza. Like I've listened to so many, you know, mm-hmm. of his books and change your brain and, you know, ha- becoming supernatural. And it's literally something that has to be in repetition. You know, it takes 68 days to create a new neural pathway, not right. 21 days. So that whole 21 days to create a new habit, Mm-mm. that's actually not correct. Not true, yeah. This neuroscientist was like, it's actually 68 days for the brain to create new synapse so they can fire and wire together. Right, right, right. Well, I'm, we're, if you can't tell, we're obsessed with neuroscientists and we study a lot, a lot. of this stuff. So that's why we're so excited to share it with y'all because we're the proof we have changed i have changed my brain you know and i have yeah. changed we've changed our lives and, and like carl Jung was a big advocate of alcoholics yeah. anonymous yeah. like his work you know was groundbreaking in a sense and like that's why i mean even when you're talking it reminds me of like that's why they give people chips yeah you know it's like you you know you you Another that milestone. Positive, positive reinforcement, yeah. you know, and like, well, we're battling old beliefs, you know, and battling the belief that I'm not safe and I'm not yeah, safe yeah. with myself or anywhere in the world. Trauma, right? So how do we combat that? I have to start to feel safe. For me, I felt safe with um, my sponsor first, you know, my therapist. And like I created the group of women around me who I started to love and feel safe with. Right. Then I felt safe with myself. It didn't come to me naturally or, or or easily. So being able to do these affirmations and be honest and speak about it, you know. And I, we, I found Louise Hay, who was powerful, powerful. And she's a, a healer who talks about affirmations and you can heal your life. And I truly believe that. And that's what I've done. So... I've incorporated all of these things, the 12 steps, the meditation, the yoga, like it's, it's, it's a full-time job to heal trauma, but it's possible. And you just got to get started by talking about it, by asking for help and seeing how other people, how did you do it? How did you overcome your pain? How did you not, how do you now like stand in your story, not like, or stand on your story, not in your story, you know? You're not the story. And I think that, uh, that's, that's been the gift of like, COVID and the BIPOC rooms, yes, I feel like, yes. um, you know, addiction looks very different for black women, yes. you know, yeah. um, it's multi-layered and it has so many nuances. So it's not just like, you know, sit down, shut up, take the whatever cotton balls out. Does, that doesn't work. That old school way. <laughs> because we're already like, 
And like even for me, right? Like this when when sponsorship came, mm-hmm. like when I when it when I had to go sponsor another woman, mm-hmm. like I had Leah tell me like y- you may not need to do that right now mm-hmm. because you probably need to give that energy to yourself. Yep. Because yep. it was like I drank to show up, I drank to give, I drank to do all these things, and we talked about like yeah, yep. you know, in in some of the white rooms, it was like, you know, they were like doing drugs and and drinking, and they were having like they were like partying with like Andy Warhol and shit, mm. and like we, I mean, I'll speak for myself, like a lot of my drinking was done it, alone. Yeah, I mean, I had a lot of fun. I did have these crazy, crazy nights. But then I, we talked about this earlier. I, it took me a few years to understand the whole, you know, my best night out there drinking and using is doesn't compare to it. Or was it my worst? My worst yeah, day yeah. sober is not is that doesn't match to my best day. I drink in a higher house ago, something like something, that. I mean that. And I finally got it, you know, because my worst day sober. And I, at first, I was like, "What do you mean? I had best days high. Like I was numb. I was drinking. I was partying." <laughs> and then finally, I think in my third year of sobriety, I was like. a a little light bulb went off and I was like, oh, because I was having a bad day, but I was still in my power. I was still with my body. And that disassociation that was me drinking and using and numbing and performing, that is not, I was never in my power. So now I get it. The self-respect, the principles of the program, you know, honesty, hope, integrity, brotherly love, you know, the service, being of service to, you know, I thought I was being of service to people my whole life, but actually it was so self-centered. It was self-centered service. uh, Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and like real service. Um, you know, I know like Juneteenth is coming up. And Juneteenth we wanted to kind of like um, they'd finally just made it a federal that. holiday. Right. Well, which is amazing. But we want I wanted to lend a voice to that in, in that like um kind of piggyback off what you just said. Mm-hmm. Um I just lost my train of thought. But how we spoke about Frederick Douglass and, and Malcolm, Malcolm X. X, but and their trauma, yeah. right? And like them their sobriety and and what kind of allowed them again they had trauma mm-hmm. right and they had to like look at that trauma yeah, Malcolm X came from the street life right he changed his life and to be able to like show up for other people mm-hmm. I guess that's what I'm trying to say like be of real service mm-hmm. you have to do the deep healing yeah. because other than that it's just performative yeah yeah and yeah I mean I think that Frederick Douglass was able to convey that message of like this is what it this is what it does I mean even when he said like when a slave is drunk, the slaveholder had no fear, fear that he would plan an insurrection, mm. right? And he mm-hmm. spoke to the nuance mm-hmm. of alcohol. It wasn't just like, just keeping it simple, like, just don't drink or use. Right. Which is great. Yeah. But Yeah. And it being given to the slaves to enslave us and right, to, right, right. you know, keep us trapped and keep us being a victim. Like, overcoming being a victim is such a part of gaining my power gaining you know as 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 a as a as a generation as a culture as a race as a society you know from time, from time you know that we were redlining into not creating our own um, abundance you know and it was just it's it's tragic but the truth is finally coming out you know just right. like black wall street you know and everything it's been hidden for a long time and all right. the truth is now at our fingertips Exactly. And which is amazing and has actually helped me to like social media because what just happened last year in June was the civil rights movement movement plus social media. And we united worldwide and we protested, yeah. you know, and it's the beginning, you know, they started it back then in the 60s and, you know, we're inkling, we're, we're, we're inchworming our way into change, you know? Right, right. Yeah. And we have to heal. So coming back to our point, it's like I have to heal my trauma in order for me to make, you know, and like and to make a way and to make, make just just to be of service and to share. Like, look, if you're feeling pain and if you are, have a lot of things that haunt you, let it out, let it go. And if you're entrapped, like, and if you're stuck in a, a bad relationship, because look, and you can't get out, get a therapist. You know what I'm saying? If you can't get a therapist, you got like, got to find a 12 step group. Like you just, we can't do it alone. You know, like we just can't. Cause I know, like I've shared in the last, like I'm paralyzed in fear when trauma takes over my body. And if it's directly correlated to what happened to me at seven and it's something that's happened to me at 28, like this is, this is beyond my, my human aid. Like right, right, it's, right. I'm powerless over this. Well, like, and, yeah. And it's a big part, I feel like of people of color stories. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Again, like even referencing Malcolm X, like they did a study on his life and he had already like racked up so many like they call them aces. So it's like adverse childhood experiences. Mm. And that's directly linked to addiction. Like and so so we look at society and like especially men of color. Mm -hmm. Right. That are um, like we were talking about snowfall. Mm -hmm. Right. Like Mm -hmm. that whole that whole correlation of now you're 
now you're selling the drug, right, to to your own community mm -hmm. because that's the only way that they've created for you to partake in capitalism yeah, or even succeed. have any type of success. Yeah. So it's like it, it's a double edged sword. Like, how do you not in, how do you not engage in that? Yeah, when that's your only way of like surviving. Yeah, and the street life is trauma. Exactly. So like everything we come from, you know, single parent mother home, you know, and not even knowing that we're missing out on anything. The stability that just isn't isn't given to us, you know, in our public schooling, you know, like we weren't given the tools on purpose. Yeah. So we of course enter into the street life worlds, not not a if you're lucky, you didn't have to experience this, but I know that I did, and I know a lot of my black like it's just what we come from. If you're from the yeah. hood, unless you're a wealthy, a wealthy, you know, wealthy black family, but I don't really know a lot of them. It's not my my culture, and I wish I did, you know. And there's a lot of them now, yeah, which is beautiful. And I think there was a lot of them back then, but white supremacy had to kibosh that yeah. because. Yeah. The most dangerous thing is what black economics. Yeah, of can't course. Have, we can't have you, you know, having anything. Of course, of course. Um, yeah, and I think that's what was so beautiful about like Malcolm X getting sober, mm -hmm. be getting incarcerated, getting sober, and then coming out and doing like this, this that whole program like mm -hmm. fishing for the dead, right? Yeah, it was basically picking up addicts off the street, and obviously it was through like the Nation of Islam, and 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 he, they did it. He did it the way that that uh that work for him yeah right yeah um the same way aa works for us yeah and just like staying sober this is this, staying sober is a revolutionary act for you sure. know speaking your mind is a revolutionary act going to a therapist is a revolutionary act like oh god like <laughs> you know when i t when like typical typical african parents like when i told them that i was going to see a therapist oh no they were like <laughs> so you're betraying us Oof. You're betraying us. That's big, right? Yes. Like betraying you. Yeah. This isn't like a. I hear that. A how lot. could you go talk about our our personal shit in these sessions? Like, and and it, and again, it was like, yo, you don't even you have no concept. And and I and then I have to like reflect back. Like my therapist had me do a project, mm -hmm. and like I was able to go back where they were from, see how life was there, and then they were like this marginalized group, right? Mm -hmm. Like the Coptics, um, you know, and just kind of. They, they, there was a whole genocide. So yeah. like they're already affected by that and they've learned to keep secrets and stay quiet and, and that they don't matter. And yeah. Yeah. it's just so multi-layered. I was like, speak, what did I say? My mommy, what did they used to say? You speak no evil or sp speak when spoken to, you know, and like you never say anything out this house. You never tell anybody what happened yeah, out this seen, house. Yeah, be seen, be seen and not heard. Be seen and not heard, you know, and like, don't you dare tell don't anybody tell, what's going on in this house. Don't tell on people. Yeah, it was like, and you that's know? cool. I mean, not cool. No, it's not, not cool. <laughs> Like you're, you're hiding. No. You're making me like. <laughs> I mean, it's respectful that there's like an order. Traumatized silence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, it, but yeah, there's toxic. It's it. Yeah. It's but just... it's it's again, we're breaking that generational trauma, right. you know, of silence. Like my nana, she won't ask for help to save her life. Yeah. And I'm like, Nana, just ask and she won't. And I know she has things that are inside of her that are eating her up and she won't talk about it. Right. I have to pull it out of her and I still don't get it all, you know, and, and then my mother taught, you know, it's it's a different generation, but then our generation, and then I, I'm excited for the newer generation who are coming through like, What? Y'all did nothing. The earth is dying. Everybody's <laughs> hating each other y'all left us shit you know and i love these activists like this is dope like i yeah. i i really i re i'm grateful that the awakening is happening you know it's right. painful it's painful how many people had to die with covid how many how many of our black brothers and sisters are killed by these cops you know oh, what i'm man. saying and how many of us drink and use over pain because we don't know anything else and there's a hundred freaking liquor stores in the hood you know like every corner there's a liquor store it's set well, up. Yeah. And even the nuance <laughs> of like the George Floyd story, yeah. you know, like yeah. his battle with addiction. And um, again, if he wasn't a black man, oh, please. It'd, be, it'd be a different narrative, right? Yeah. Like it would have it would have gone down differently. But they used his addiction to demonize him. Yeah, they did. And, and they did it over and over again. If you watched, I, I couldn't even really watch it. No, but um, and horrible. it took like his, you know, his white girlfriend and it's again no 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 dig but like to get on the stand and and like play her position right that's of why like allies the, we need them yeah well allies but also 
It had to come from her. Unfortunately. Yeah. It, it couldn't come from... If if he was dating a black woman and she got up on this, that oh, would have never went no, down that way. it wouldn't. It wouldn't have been put on TV at all. Right, right. And so it's those but nuances. But thank God for social media. Because right. then it's like social media gets a hold of it and it's a hashtag and it boom, fire thread. And then it's sent. The activists are sending it to all the legis- like all of the representatives. Like, we're not playing no more. We're at your doorstep. You know? Like- and you know what? You just reminded me, actually. So they're doing this thing in recovery... Um, where they're getting delegates. So they're they're reaching out and trying to get people of color that are delegates for like different areas mm-hmm. in LA to basically get on the committee to introduce literature that's based around um, the black experience. Yes. Which yes, I think it's time yes. for that. And so, the so, you know, everything's running parallel and I think it's groundbreaking and it's creating a lot of change because we do need books about our experience. Absolutely. I mean, there's what one story, one two stories. Yeah, well, I think one story. One and story. It's horrible. And it's she didn't stay sober. Lowest, the bottom the, of the yeah, bottom. Bottom of the bottom. And she ended up dying. Yeah. Um, but we have a new generation, and and it's a whole new world. And it's like we have to heal ourselves in order to even be able. Like I gotta fill my cup up in order to make a change. Like I, if my cup's empty, and if I am out there drinking and staying high, and if, at least for me, because I have addiction from my parents, it's passed down, you know, and it's I'm of help to no one, to myself, you know. I right. can't I can't make a change, and I want to help. I want to live in purpose and on purpose, right? And I think that it keeps us in in the, uh, you know, like in the in the white matrix. Oh, yeah, everything. I mean, we live in America. Like, you're so programmed to just, like, go make money um, and do all these things that, like, just leave you empty. And then you're drinking to kind of, like, keep on that hamster wheel. So then overcoming that, like, how do we harness the willingness to to even fight against this without being like, fuck it? Because that was my thing, like, my my fuck it switch. I'm like, fuck it. What's the point? But that, that... I can't, I can't, I can't. That That's dangerous. You know, I have to have a stance. If I, you stand for nothing, you fall for anything, right? But until I was able to like manifest that willingness and vulnerability, you know, and like the toxic shame that comes with PTSD and trauma right. and addiction. The shame is paralyzing just like fear. It's a very, very low vibration, you know, and I have to, there's a concept I like dethrone my perpetrators and that is cops. That is racism. Yeah. That is the freaking KK. Like, and that's a, that's a paradox because it's so justified and I am anger and our anger, it's okay to be angry, but it's the rage that takes me out. And I have yeah, to yeah, yeah. portal my anger into a positive, positive direction, which right. is why we want to come on here and hope that something of we're saying will just inspire someone and be like, you know what? I do have this anger and I can do something about it. I don't know how to dissect this anger yet. Like to shame, to fear, to sadness, to remorse. Like the, you know what I mean? I had to have a, a therapist hand me a sheet of emotions, y'all. Oh, me too. The, the feelings chart? <laughs> yes. Yeah, the feelings chart. That shit's so, the laminated feelings chart oh. with the fucking emojis. Wow, like we've come far. Frustrated. That was like every, six years ago. Yeah. Because every, every time she'd ask me, um, you know, how you feel, I'm like, I'm mad. And she's like, that's not on the feeling chart. <laughs> feeling chart. And then I had to get into, yeah, like the the broader. And I think that, again, the inventory and, and the amends yes. and all of that like yes. helps with getting more emotionally yeah man it's the free intelligent it's the yeah. free it's the, it's available and it's worldwide now you know people are very I'm, I, I say 12 step and they're like you know you're not supposed to pro- promote it but it's everywhere and why hide it you know what I'm saying I'm just saying 12 step y'all can figure it out Google 12 step programs and they're everywhere right. and it's a 12 step process of uncovering discovering they say, they say discarding I like to say alchemize because this is alchemy here you know what I'm saying I'm turning shit into gold. Right. <laughs> like bottom line. Ain't that the truth. <laughs> shit into gold, son. And then when you try to take me out of my shit, I'm kicking and screaming to stay in, in it. My, oh my I'm God. mad because I'm like, well, it's a great. You think about it. Like if you're living in shit, right? And you're just <laughs> covered in it, right? The and visual? then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I got my eyes out and I'm starting to be gold. What's more comfortable? Like 90% of my body is still in shit. I'm going to go back down, y'all. Because right. I'm scared. So I'm like, yeah. no, no, I'm comfortable in my shit over here. No, but guess what? Then you're like, wait, this is stinky. I don't really want this. I deserve more. Yeah, and I've witnessed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the, the, I, I, the visual, I've witnessed but you don't get it. <laughs> I've witnessed you deep in shit. Deep in shit. <laughs> uh, deep, 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 deep in shit. And, um, and, and then like the shit kind of. <laughs> Lightweight start. I was already in my own shit, and then it kind of started swinging my way. Like, I mean, Toxic again, we're, we're gonna y'all. yeah, we're gonna talk in code, but um, 
No, keep it real. Keep it true. All it right, is what I, it I is. I keep it real. Um, <laughs> like even to the point where we couldn't even have a friendship because. Yeah, because I was toxic. So I was in a toxic relationship, you know what I mean? And then that's what happened. So, and, but luckily I had the strength because I went to a therapist who told me yeah. I needed help. And I just, I had that desire in me and I knew there was better. Why? Because I moved, I moved my ass from Boston to New oh, York yeah. to Los Angeles. I toured around. I, I, I had to leave my little world in the hood and, my, and the projects that my mom live in to see that there's a, there's a billion other ways to live. Right. And I can actually live another way. Yeah. And that this person that you were getting high, you know, and drunk with, yeah. even though <laughs> now you guys are both in the rooms, you're doing the real, real work. Yeah. And I yeah. think at one point, you know, you and I had discussed, and I had witnessed it, hearing a lot about your mother's story. Yeah. And also dealing with her up front, like yeah. you, the, the person at the time and being like, oh, like this is recreating childhood. Dating my mother. Yeah, the archetype. Yeah. Right? The archetype of like yeah. that that mother, that father. I mean, and not like in a in a creepy way, but like- No, in the energetic, yeah. the, the, the re-traumatizing myself because again, everything is energy. So if I am in a toxic relationship, it's because this is the lesson I need to learn. Things keep coming up until I learn them. So right. it's like when you, when I get out of that relationship, I had to, I was alone. I stayed alone. I dated myself. I fell in love with myself. I started literally learning that I deserved more and I didn't believe I deserved shit. I right. still vacillate. And it's hard, but yeah. I way more believe I like it's. It, I know I deserve more now. And when I go over there, I know it's a bullshit lie, and I don't believe that right. thought anymore. On a good day, unless I'm PMSing, right? And then I might believe. And then it. that's <laughs> that's the disclaimer. Um, that's when shit just goes awry for women uh, for in women. recovery. Okay, um, but also like to piggyback off what you were saying, like um, you can't do that when you're drunk, right? Like no. I was able to finally see like um, like my father, like. I put my father up on a pedestal, kind yeah, of. Yeah. But then, like, dis disregarded all his defects. And, like, again, in his older age and, like, repairing our relationship <clears throat> due to him not, you know, advocating for me yep. with the abuse and all that shit. Yeah. But um, spending time with him and hearing him talk, I'm like, you are, like, I don't, what's another word for a douche? Um, A douche. Like, he's like... <laughs> He, all the stories that are like on the car ride yeah. to like the doctor's appointments are basically like, like the bitches in the village still want him. <laughs> the bitches, the in, bitches the in the village. Like, I'm like, yo, like, yep, okay. Yep. Yep. And that like my mom is, he's. It's a womanizer, you know? He's just a total womanizer. Yeah. A total woman. But, but again, that like for years I replicated that over oh, yeah. and over again. Dating and it, womanizers. Right. And until sobriety and other alcoholics. Yes. And until yes. sobriety was like, oh. Like that oh, light switch went off. Oh, yes. So like, like, oh yeah, no, no, this is not, this ain't it. And knowing that my part, it's my fault. I cannot blame that ex. I cannot blame yeah. my mom and dad, even though it's justified. And those wounds must be healed. But once I come through that that victim state, because I'm a victim until I can be like, okay, now I'm a survivor. Right. And now I'm living on another level where I'm fucking thriving, y'all. I ain't trying to survive. I, survival sucks. Like fight or flight, freeze. Hey, I'm over that tango. Like no, I'm no, no. fucking over it. So yeah. I want to thrive. Right. And I think that was my favorite part of the... Uh... The inventory. Yes. Was yeah. like, oh, my part. It's, like, it's mind blowing. Because that's like, oh, yeah, no, I'm I like I run this. Yeah. And so the, the minute I stop, you know, engaging in this manner is the minute that I can set myself free. Like I yeah. liberate myself. Amen. Um, a woman, and that like I alien. don't need drugs, alcohol, candy, sugar, uh, relationships, anything outside of myself. Like I can- Validation. All of that. Yeah. I can do it for myself, you know? And that's why it's important to complete all 12 steps. So oh, when you yeah. hear us, we're talking about the the fourth step today, but like, you know, in order to like see it, I, I call them defenses, the defects of character with defenses, because I need a gentle language. Yeah. Like I beat myself up good enough. And these defenses that I, I that they kept me alive through dangerous situations, mm -hmm. they no longer work. So like crushing these old belief systems and inserting new ones, hence going back to changing our brain, which we were discussing. Like this is all something, persistence is the price we must pay to change our life yeah and you know and, and like while you're talking i'm thinking about like when i first met up and was doing the work with leah because i had a sponsor before and it was it just didn't work because mm -hmm. we weren't hitting on the nuances and I remember sitting sitting with her and she was like why don't you pay homage to your defects mm. right like give them some respect yeah because they kept you alive and we, but now it's like they just they they've, they've gone awry yeah like it's off the rails yeah and now it's basically doing the opposite. It's like keeping 
good things at bay. Yeah. And so pay homage, pay respect, and you just don't need it. Yeah. And no, that's why amends is so important yes. too. I think the amends process is the completion of the fourth step inventory work. When I make amends, I have to make my amends to myself. Oh yeah. And making amends to myself, number one, means I'm going to stay sober because I am in my power. I don't make bad choices when I'm not blacked out. <laughs> oh my you know, God. Like, I won't sleep with men when I'm gay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like what? Uh, Laura, my sponsor, she... <laughs> Yeah, go she, on. She always, every time I want to drink or you, she was like, this is like you want to sleep with dudes. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this worked last time I wanted to drink. Yo. And she was like, yeah, this is every time you break up with somebody, a girl, you want to get with guys. And she was like, this is like you right now wanting to have a drink. And I'm like, oh my God, you just really went there. Yeah. And she was, and you know, sexual trauma. 99% of sexual assaults happen with liquor, except uh, maybe 95 because childhood stuff is just horrible and fuck right. you all perpetrators. But sorry, I digress. <laughs> so alcohol sells sexual assault in men <laughs> for me. And I'm like, yeah. God and damn, Lord, you had to go there. You had to go there. Like, keep it real. I, and that's why we have sponsors. Exactly. To, to tell us. And like, <laughs> with me, it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, when I would drink it, I didn't, I didn't sleep with men. Mm. I basically fought them. Like I, you would I have would your feelings through. I rage. would have my feelings through rage. Like so, if anybody brushed up against me or like touched me, it was like it was on. It was on. I never, I'll never forget. I was at a where was I? The Century Club. Oh, wow. if you're from LA. <laughs> anyway, I was young. I was underage, I think. And some dude, like I don't even know, tapped me, touched me in some oh, way. Oh no! And that fucking that that like that switch went off i had that's like when you used to straighten your hair days oh yeah this oh, motherfucker yeah. literally rolled up to me <laughs> poured a drink on half my head oh no so i was walking around with like half the shit curly yeah, the and half the man shit do. straight the method man do <laughs> <laughs> the method man do half that braided half, half out, half out. <laughs> i love that <Method> man. <laughs> and i was like yeah, I mean, and, and and I'm lucky that it like didn't it didn't escalate, yeah. you know. But yeah. I've had I've you know I've I've yeah. That's where it kind of takes me. Me too. I've been carried out of clubs and meatpacking in in <laughs> meatpacking district in New York. Literally, six men carry me out, and I'm up like. <laughs> I swear to y'all, God, because I try to fight this dude. Oh yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> they carried me. Well, I had a skirt on. That don't matter. I was carried out. <laughs> Because of our trauma. Because of our trauma. Yeah. Yeah. We drink. We think that that's power. Yeah. It's fake power. And we act a fool. And today it doesn't look like that. You no. Know, actually, not today, at all. Not I don't at even. All. I don't even meet those. I don't even meet those men. Same, same. Again, the energy. You've alchemized yourself. You right. have, you know, like, and for myself, I'm in a loving relationship right now, you know, with someone also doing the work, you know, like if I can't be in a relationship with anybody else, with anybody that doesn't want to do the work because I'm committed to the work. And if I'm growing, like we are mirrors to who we're sleeping with and our friends and family, but specifically who we're intimate with, right? And it's like, it's not going to work. So hence, like if I stay toxic and I'm with somebody toxic and I'm like, I can't get out. Nothing changes if nothing changes. So unfortunately, the hard the hard out is out. And like, even if it's like, I got to take a break to be alone right now and work on myself, which I know how hard that is. Like, I tried to get out of my last relationship a hundred times, you know, and I just couldn't until... Well, well, well. <laughs> in your defense. <laughs> no, yeah, go ahead, please. <laughs> um, you tried. You tried. You tried so yeah. hard. Yeah, she was like... <laughs> I mean, but I wasn't this is like, there's like being a stalker and then like being persistent. And it was a little bit of both. Like you moved, <laughs> you moved like to LA. It was just to Baldwin Hills. Baldwin Hills. R.I.P. John which, Singleton. Oh I got to God. live next to him for a second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what now? <laughs> Nothing. Just like I remember rolling up to that spot. Oh Lord, y'all. So this is, yeah, it was, I it had was, just got, exited a toxic relationship. Right. And then I was, it was my out. And I chose a place, this beautiful, beautiful house on the outside in the hills of Baldwin Hills. Inside was a shit show. It was disgusting. It was dirty. I saw it at night. I didn't even look at it. It was dark. I said, I'll take it. This is toxicity. This is me co coming out of my shit into a, a, a slightly less place of shit, you know? Right. <laughs> a less <laughs> shittier the place. slow incline to gold. You know what I'm saying? And luckily I have friends allow me who love me. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Leah was so worried. <laughs> they dropped me off there. They're like... <laughs> my, our, my, sp my sponsor. <laughs> we were both worried. My sponsor and oh. I um, were on that joy ride. And I remember we walked in and we were like... <laughs> this is a... This is nice. 
But I I ran. I got out of the place I was living with my ex because she kept pulling me back in. And you know what I'm saying? It was just like, and I was like, I'm out. I just got to make this impulsive move and get Mm -hmm. out. Sometimes you got to do that. And then I was at that place for three months. And then I went and found another roommate who was also just a little slightly more up the shit pull. You know what I'm saying? It was a little less shitty. And then finally, (laughs) I got my own place now. And I am in a hat, like I'm... I am in the best place I've ever been in my life, but this is the slow Mm. incline out of trauma, living from my trauma. I no longer live in it. You know what I'm saying? It's it's my story. It happened to me. It's not who I am. But until this last couple years, you know, like until year two of sobriety, to be quite honest, is when I finally found my power. Like the first two years, shaking all that shit loose, it was still who I was because it it, 30, how old am I? 38. 30 years of trauma don't turn around or 38 because it was happening when I was a baby. Maybe, but like they mm. don't turn around in a year or two. Right. But you know? I saw you. I mean, that's what I've always like admired about you. You know, like you too. Well, yeah. But I mean, there's been shit that's come up in sobriety for me. That's definitely like, um, I think that basically what was it like a year ago? Which what? Uh, the shit with my uncle. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. So like basically like my trauma kind of came back full circle. And so it was like an incident where full circle, full y'all. circle, like, whew. like basically, um, so yeah, like the the person that abused me's father is basically, um, how do I put this? He's basically created like a, a like a legacy of abuse, basically. And so he, he's he's an abuser, and he has the son that's an abuser. And then I find out that he, uh, my uncle's basically stealing money from my other uncle with dementia, and. Uh, and I just, that like didn't sit well with me. It was like, this is not going to keep continuing. It's not going to keep perpetuating itself. So, and and because I obviously had abuse by his son, it made it even more personal. And um, I ended up, because of sobriety, because of sobriety, I was able to do it the right way, right? Yeah, like yeah. I used my brain. I went and became the, like the trustee of his estate. Um, I did everything like on the legal legal front I got a restraining order and this is what I'm getting at Mm -hmm. he violated it which I knew he was going to violate and uh he basically yeah attacked me with uh brass knuckles and he had a gun in the car and um and I didn't feel it in real time Mm -hmm. right my trauma didn't it didn't allow me to feel it in real time and it was really interesting to look at my other cousin that was there and she was like fucking hysterical Right, yeah. because that's a normal response. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't have my my. I don't. I don't feel you in fro- real time. You froze. Right, and then what happened was it got stored, and then for eight months I was in a in a shell. Yeah. Right, yep. like I we weren't yep. even really talking yep. because I couldn't. I didn't want to connect. I didn't want to. Wow. Yep. You know, I didn't want. I went into that place where I don't ask for help. Revenge. Well, well, yeah, revenge. But like smart revenge, mm-hmm, very smart. Which is revenge. still, which is still really insidious, because um, it's still revenge at the mm-hmm, end of the day. Mm-hmm. Anyway, all that to say, it was inspiring to see you keep on track, and I think that's that's the power. Of, that's the power of meeting other Fellowship, people, sisterhood, well, and especially people that look yeah. like us, yeah. right? Like it's like, oh shit, like you have all these nuances too in your life, and you're still walking through it. Yes, yes. So. Yeah. Nah, sis, and I just always sitting here celebrating you, and and I call her, text her. You know, we love each other unconditionally in fellowship. Like we don't shoot our wounded, and it was beyond right. just um, the fellowship, like twelve steps. Like I met my soul sister here, like a kindred spirit, like in every way, and that's what twelve step has given me. Mm-hmm. Like I've had hundreds, thousands of friends. You know, people still call me their friend from Boston Middle School, but no, like. I we connected on a on a way that was like, you know, you know the real, real ones. Like, and I'm blessed to have a few from when I was out drinking. But like this in meeting in recovery, it's like yeah. we <laughs> we we meet and we say, So what's what's your trauma? Here's mine, you right, know? Right. Like this is how we connect. Let's talk about the worst shit that's Let's, ever happened to the us. Worst and, and, shit. And, and like it doesn't and like we love like it doesn't it's authentic. No, and like authentic, no one's scared. Yeah. Well, hopefully they're not scared. But um, well, then they're not like that's what I'm saying. This well, is yeah, easy, then, then you know. Exactly, you're then, my person. We're people, right. you know, and like it's it's just you got to find your people, and hence, like again, going back to finding your people in that movement of just you can't do it alone. Like bottom line, if you don't take nothing from this, like please just ask for help. Reach out to somebody, anybody, one person, you know, and a hashtag on a, on a, on a, on Instagram, dude. Like there's self help programs, there's hotlines, there's. Everything is on Zoom right now. So, like, you ain't even got to leave your house. You can still, you can just put a shirt on, you know what I mean? And have the camera on your face. Right. And you can get some help. And I saw a lot of people do that during the pandemic, right? Like, I feel like what we talked about, 
we all collectively went through the dark night of the soul. Oh, yeah. Oh, right? Yeah. Like, everything shut down. No, no more distractions. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people got sober, right? They logged on Zoom. And a lot but, of people died. And a lot of people died. A lot of people died from their their addiction. COVID and addiction. Like, Suicide. the addiction soared, like, 99% or something. The numbers are crazy. The police. The police. Um, and so, yeah, the dark night of the soul is, I think, a really important, like, for me, it was, yeah, when my addiction and my trauma, like, met. And I was at a crossroads. Yeah. Like, yeah. shit got real bad. I saw how progressive this disease can be. Yes. And I saw, like, yeah, I mean, the trajectory. Yeah. Like, and it wasn't going to be good. No, no. And then when we're saying dark night of the soul, for me, it was just, like, when everything collapsed. Like, my emotional system, my physical, my outside world is collapsing. I'm so, like, everything... All my world is crumbling. All my old beliefs are no longer working. And right. I have something that I need to confront. And right. I had resentment, abuse, neglect, like all that shit. Like narcissism, not, you know, my mom's a little bit narcissistic, you know. And having a narcissistic mom, parent, like that's a that's a whole different type of trauma, y'all. And right. it's, it's a big deal to talk about. And we have to. And it's up to us, us to, to, to share it so that other people can hopefully be like, okay, normalize talking about it. And yeah, it was hard too to talk about this stuff. And my mother was upset at first when I started making music about it all. And I'm like, look, this is my story. If you were a doctor, I would talk about that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you chose your life and guess what? I remember she said to me one time, how does me being a prostitute affect you? And I was like, whoa, she, I heard that's what, that's <laughs> that day that you told her about the abuse. And it was like. God bless her. And I love you, mom. God, all love, love, love. This is just my story and we're breaking the trauma and she wants to heal. She's a different woman now. She's doing her, you know what I mean? And that's not my business. Guess what? My right. business is my business, which is how am I healing? How right. am I working on my emotional reg regulation? And I'm, that means I'm not drinking and using over feelings. And that means I'm meditating and I'm praying to something that's better than myself, higher power. Or it could be the sun. It could be the trees. It could be your dog, dude. Like I'm not or preaching religion. Your dog. I like <laughs> my that. Dog. My dog. God. Uh, G-O-D backwards, baby. Shout out to Bentley <laughs> and Lucy. And Lucy. <laughs> oh, man. So, yes, um, man. Healing trauma. Yeah. Healing trauma is yeah. so nuanced. This is going to be a too episodic because... It's, it's, yeah, it's too much to cover. It um, is too much to cover, but I really want to make sure, like, you know, we just put a light on the fact that our heart, everything carries. Our body keeps score. Mm -hmm. And if we don't remove it, the energy, if we don't shake it out, talk about it, you know, massage it out, like, you have to do it all. Chiropract it out. It stays in there. And that's where sickness is happening. Happen, you know that, and, and it progresses into illnesses, and it's 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 nonstop. So well, dis ease, it's dis, dis ease, ease, you know. And, and I think addiction is a big, you know, it covers that up for only so long. Yeah, till it goes off the rails, till you're crashing your car and you don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you don't remember how that happen yeah when you have abandonment wounds you know an abandonment can create ptsd and i think you said something key where it's like you didn't even know ptsd could be some from some i could have it and not not have to be in war you know only people from that, that are in war can have ptsd that's not true a household war you know emotional war neglect right. abuse narcissism like it goes on and on sexual and sexual in many ways like Look, sexual abuse is, is is so deep and and for me it relationship it's all energy, you know, how I've healed my relationship with men, you know, I really had to had to look at all that and do all 12 steps and talk about it and really realize that like not everybody is out to get me and I'm safe, but I had to learn how to have boundaries and that there are principled men out there. There right? are good men out there. Like when Shout you out live, to y'all. Yeah. And when you live with a, a you know, you live with framework of recovery, it helps that because you have, you know, you're your higher, you're your highest version of yourself. Yeah, yeah. Um, it gives yeah. us the the ability, you know. Again, persistence is the price we pay for this, y'all. It ain't a one and done thing, but get, get like the framework of the twelve step program have given me the ability mm. to heal all this other stuff that I'm talking about. And now I get to be a parent, you know, and I get to not be terrified that I'm going to perpetuate pain, you know, and I get to heal and break that, break it and I, break, yeah. break, break, break the curse and that cycle and that with cycle. me. Like I think of my uh, nephew, like he'll yeah. never see me, he'll never see me drunk and he'll have a safe place. He'll yeah. have an adult, like I didn't have a safe adult. Role models. They were all like. No role models over here. I mean, role <laughs> models, like they were just like the fucking, I mean, and I'm seeing it now, like I'm seeing it. Um, the, the same uncle that was kind of being abused recently, he passed a week ago and, um, he was worth a lot of money and whatever. Um, and like a lot of 
a lot of my family doesn't have money. Mm -hmm. And so it's just like shown you that, and they're all in their addiction. Yeah. They're all, it's, it's a, it's a pure, like looking at people like, oh yeah, like you don't even know. Yeah. Like you have no recovery. You have no, you don't even think you have a problem. Well, they're straight in fight or flight, survival. Yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah. some people don't ever come out. And it's not meant for everybody. Yo. No, like, it's not. Everybody's not going to want to listen to this. going to be like, come on, they're chill out. Off. You know, like my old friends be like, okay, Keep Oprah. it light. Okay, Oprah. Keep it light. <laughs> and that's cool. But for the people who want to change, Google EMDR therapist. Google, what is EMDR? That's something that can change your life. Google group therapy. Google 12-step programs. Go on to YouTube and Google whatever meeting you need. You know, codependency, alcoholism. You yeah, know, advocate, <laughs> advocate for your yourself like and if you can't we're advocating for you you know and telling you literally go do this right now yeah because <laughs> basically what ends up happening like we've discussed this road leads where you're either dead you're incarcerated or you're like a lot of the women in my family like they've they've put themselves in situations of such like deep especially especially domestic violence that it's the point of no return. Yeah. Like I see my yeah. uncle, my, my, I'm sorry, my aunt that raised me, it's like she now has dementia like at a very early age. Um, oh, and man. and like living in that household for a couple of years and seeing like the constant domestic violence. Yeah. And um and, and also, down, right? yeah. And then also because I, I, I saw it, I replicated it, mm -hmm. right? Like I've been mm -hmm. in a relationship that was violent and like, again, drinking and not seeing anything wrong with it mm -hmm. and then getting mm -hmm. sober and being like, yeah, none of that's normal. Yeah. Again, dethroning the perpetrators right. because you think like, you, well, know, you just you... keep meeting your abuser. Exactly. So therefore you're idolizing that old toxic philosophy because right. you're recreating it. So I am sitting there recreating this. I'm the abuser right. and I'm being abused. Like that navigating that dance from what, and then being a victim when I'm abused. And it's like, what? Right. <laughs> so how do we break it? Like we just get out of relationships. At least for me, I got out of all relationships and was alone right. and looked at myself in the mirror and truly did that shadow work, you know, and I'm, I'm lucky to have be, been able to surrender and become willing, you know, and just stay willing. And I pray to keep myself willing every day. And there's that slogan, one day at a time, one breath at a time, because it li literally I, I can go into anxiety panic attack, but anxiety is the price we pay for shit that never happens. Mm. So like 24 hours a day, I could do that. Or I can do one hour. I can do from this time. You know what I'm saying? And then in the next hour, check in. You know, I can do the next hour. Right. You know, but we, we do it with support. And well, and see and, and be able to see our potential and our greatness in others, right? Like, even when I, like, went through that time, I was able to still see you. Yeah. And Leah and other yeah. people, you know, in the rooms just be like, yeah, this shit happens and you just persevere. Yeah. You just keep walking through it. Like, keep walking. sobriety isn't like a promise that, you know, shit's going to be all good. But it gives you a... Uh, you know, a blueprint for mm -hmm. life that you mm -hmm. don't have to live, um, you know, with like a backpack full of like your ancestral trauma and like mm -hmm. your past shit so you can start anew. Yeah. You can have a new life. Yeah. And it just takes time. It's just like slow, slow and steady win wins the race. race. Yeah. It is a marathon, you know, RIP Nipsey, you know, like it's a marathon. <laughs> <laughs> Hip hop I love forever, y'all. Uh, I love your little <laughs> shout outs. And happy birthday Tupac today, man. Is it um, his birthday today? Yeah, it is. Okay. And he definitely sparked my brain to change the world. So let's, let's, let's make, make, make use of this life that we have. And it's a pivotal, incredible time to be alive. And we, I feel the responsibility to spread the word, spread love <laughs> and spread, spread recovery and healing. And, you know, I'm also a Reiki master energy work. So like get a coach, get a meditation teacher, get an energy coach, get a life coach, like, but just don't sit there. And if you're like, but I don't have the money, there's millions of free workshops on YouTube. And guess what? You could find that person on Instagram and then you could talk to them for a free consultation. And like, it's okay <laughs> if meditation, like I struggle with meditation. Yes, I get like, it. Like my brain is not wired to meditate, but I'm okay with that right now. Yeah. You know, and I know that with time it'll get better. And then there's ways for that. There's mantras. Like it's just learning how to, and breath work and tapping. Breath work for people with overactive mind, life changer. Like right. breathe in for four, hold for four, out for four, 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 four breath. Like right. it'll change your life. Do it five times. And it goes on and on. If you, yeah. if you have an overactive mind, breath work, jump up and down. You know what I'm saying? Like go swimming and go for a run and there's meetings now that are like meditation meetings there are but i find myself during the meditation yeah meditation you on the phone you're doing this you're not doing even that. on the phone i'm just like doing bullshit braiding my hair got my Your camera off. so beautiful though 
What? Your braids look so beautiful. Oh, thank you. Oh, um, man. Yeah, just nonsense. It's like that That time was set aside, but I, I, I'll, I'll get I'll get there. Yeah, and it's ma ma mantras. Mantras really help. Like, I am love. I am safe. 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 Look, I just meditated in front of y'all. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> this is true. All right, y'all. So, All right. Revolutionary anecdotes. And we'll hopefully, hopefully, you know, this can be an antidote for somebody because I think that, you know, I'm excited to just share, 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 share our experience, strength, and hope with y'all. Peace out. Fire in my heart, fire up in Malibu Find the gratitude, but a f***ing attitude Need some medicine, time to get tattooed America, America, why you so rude? Pain at the magnitude, infinite latitude Jumping up the balcony, I need a parachute Heartbreaking, leaves shaking Turn to ashes, cycle shooting masses Change coming like molasses Sam Cook said it gon' come My ancestors bleed, young stay dumb Hands up, don't run Cop with a gun, black boy shot billionaire on a yacht. No f**ks given, thanksgiving Celebrate a massacre, why they laugh at ya? Ravish ya, only Christopher, we acknowledge ya Mr. Wallace, ya, join the right, yeah? We all got problems We all got problems, be kind We all got problems We all got problems, be kind Be kind, be kind, be kind Be kind, be kind. Political assassination, domination, never second nation. Kanye in the White House, black facing, disgracing, erasing a legacy of activism. Now we all laughing at him, uh, but he lost his mind. Uh, like thoughts of suicide, mama popping pills, opiate genocide, homicide, horrified, Kavanaugh glorified. Yeah. Should be crucified, yep. tend to age Celta, babies terrified This is the life we live, reality TV, brainwashing kids People doing bids, hurt kid apocalypse, what's going on? What if Marvin Gaye live? This is the life we live, I'm over all this shit We all got problems, we all got problems, be kind We all got problems, we all got problems, be kind Life we live. We all got problems. We all got problems.